Hey, I'm Warren Sprouse here on the Bible Forum. It is September 17th, 2017. We're talking about natural disasters. We've just been through a couple and we got more coming. We went through uh, the, the hurricane in Texas and then right behind that came the hurricane in Florida. And now there's a hurricane, Jose, squirreling around in the Atlantic. And then right behind him is, who is it, Irma? I forget who it is now. There's another one coming up. Uh, going after all those islands in the Caribbean again. With the advent of hurricanes, these three that have just happened and the new ones uh, that are popping up, a new book by end times theorist Jonathan Kahn has got the entire digital universe in a quiver. This week, CBN News is reporting that Franklin Graham, in a Facebook post, wrote, quote, wildfires raging on the West Coast, violent hurricanes one after the other, ravaging everything in their paths, with one of the worst, Irma, bearing down on Florida, a magnitude 8.1 earthquake that shook the southern parts of Mexico in the week prior to the to the uh, second hurricane. And we just recently experienced a rare solar eclipse, and he didn't even know about the new one coming, the new earthquake, the new uh, <laughs> hurricane coming. Franklin Graham went on to say that these events were foretold in Scripture. Quoting Luke chapter 21, there will be signs in, in the sun and the moon and the stars and on the earth distress of nations in perplexity because of the roaring of the sea and the waves. He also quoted Matthew chapter 24, which says, for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. These are some of the biblical signs before Christ's return. He went on to say, nobody knows the day or the hour, not even the Son of God, but it is a reminder to all of us to be ready to repent and to confess our sins and to ask for God's forgiveness. In the meantime, we can find comfort and peace and hope in Him. Graham concluded with a call to pray for those affected by the hurricanes, both Harvey and Irma, and the wildfires in the Northwest and other natural disasters. That, my friends, is a hodgepodge of theological eschatology, all out of order and all twisted up for effect. We don't expect that from Franklin Graham. But during a segment in which Jim Baker, in his online program, was selling $175 buckets of his disaster preparedness food called Tasty Pantry, he and his co-host began discussing natural disasters and Hurricane Harvey in specific. The co-host said he believed that the storm had nothing to do with climate change. He said that he felt the real issue with the weather and everything else on the earth had to do with sin and with wickedness. He said the whole earth will cry out because of the shedding of innocent blood. He's talking about abortion. He said that's what throws nature off more than dumping CO2 or anything else into the atmosphere. Jim Baker clearly encouraged, then told his co-host, of his thoughts on the flooding as a result of Harvey, saying, I have felt, and I was afraid to share it with anybody, but I have felt that this flood is from God. It's a judgment on America somehow. The fact that it hit Cuba first and worse. Uh, Am I off, or do you feel it could be, he said. The co-host agreed with Baker's assessment, noted that he feels it's time to step up against the perversion of our times and call it what it is. Do you hear all this feel this and feel that? 
I know they're just vernacular, but come on. He said, these things don't just happen by accident. If we don't get these things, if we don't get clear messages, things are going to get a lot more severe. Baker added, just remember, God gets the last word. God gets the last word. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. <sighs> if it happens, Baker said, there will be a civil war in the United States of America. What's he talking about? He's talking about the adamant convictions that if President Donald Trump were to be impeached, there would be a civil war. Now, I ask you, what does one have to do with the other? But this was all one segment. This is what passes for Christian broadcasting. The problem here is that I get concerned that more and more people, even true believers, are being taught that what we see today in terms of these events, whatever they may be on the global scale, are somehow signs described in the book of the Revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. And they are being seriously confused and or being corrupted as a result. And the major point here is that in the Bible there are no signs, zero, zero, nada, none, that prefigure the return of the Lord Jesus Christ for his church. Not one. Now, keep in mind there are two returns. <laughs> there is the return of Jesus for his church. That is in the air. People on the earth are not going to see him. He comes in the air to retrieve his bride, to call her out and away from this crazy con nonsense. And then there is the return of the Lord Jesus Christ to the Mount of Olives bodily, putting his foot on that mountain and it breaking in half, coming then to take possession of his property, this earth, the one he paid for on the cross. This earth belonged to him. It was taken when Adam yielded to the devil in that famous interchange. Paul said in the book of Romans, to whomsoever you yield yourself servant to obey his servant you become. And there was a sense in which Adam's sin transferred the earth to the devil. Now, I still belong to God, but the devil now runs it. Jesus came and paid to buy back what belonged to him, and one day he will come and take possession of it. Now, his first coming for the bride, no biblical signs, no biblical instructions, nothing to tell the world or Christians or anybody when it's going to happen, only that he will pull his bride out before he returns to judge the earth. We're going to look at that more closely a little bit later in the show. But the point here is, the Bible also makes it very clear that natural disasters are a direct consequence of sin, the sin of mankind against God. Does that mean that America will be judged for legitimizing abortion or homosexuality or divorce or premarital sex and all the rest of it? All things, by the way, that God has specifically condemned, specifically called sin. Sins, he says, corrupts a society. I believe the answer is yes. America will be judged. But I believe that has already happened. Look at the increasingly low level of morality being expressed on every level of society. The point here is that human beings are evil beyond anything we can imagine. That's what the Bible tells us. What keeps us from expressing that evil every day? Nothing but the restraining power of God. 
When a person or a society rejects God, God lightens or removes some of that divine restraint. You want it, you can have it. We're watching it happen before our very eyes. So are these natural disasters God's judgment? The answer is clearly yes. No. Natural disasters occur because of the changes made to the planet as a result of the flood, a flood which came as a direct judgment from God against a world gone mad in Genesis chapter 10. Franklin Graham goes on to say, it is accurate to say Christianity does teach that gay sex causes hurricanes. I'm waiting for the Bible verse. And he says that divorce causes hurricanes and that theft causes hurricanes. Or you can insert whatever sin you want because they all cause hurricanes. No verses. Graham went on to point out the obvious. Those involved in these gross personal and societal sins, they're going to bear the brunt of God's judgment. Because God specifically condemns all of that in the strongest possible terms. He promises that these people will face the judge one day, a holy judge. He promises that, the, that all of this will result in devastating effect because there is a judgment for rebellion against God. It's compared to if you stick your finger in the light socket, you're going to get shocked. You do this, you get that. It's the, the way it works. My point in all of this, there are definite biblical answers about what actions are sin, what actions or are sins, that would incur the wrath of God, both in this world and in terms of eternity. And they do include gay sex, the murder of children in their mother's womb. It does include divorce and slander and theft and unfaithfulness to one's spouse or children and worshiping any God other than the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Trinity of which he is a part to name the most obvious sins. Although some would protest otherwise, these are all plain text readings of the Bible and reinforced by thousands of years of church scholarship and theology. The core issue here is not whether we're going to find ourselves with hurricanes and earthquakes and pestilences because we haven't been doing right. The core issue is that the world at large doesn't care, doesn't want to do right, hates God, doesn't want to even hear his name. That's why it has become a curse. It has become a vulgarity of the, the most obvious sort. Why? Because everybody knows it is this God that has to be dealt with. And we don't want to do that. These hurricanes, these disasters, they're just the result of a world that isn't perfect. A globe that has serious deficiencies. It's not perfect. And it's going to create this stuff all the time. Will it get worse? Yeah. Is it God's direct judgment? No clear answer yes on that anywhere in scripture. It's conjecture.